and um, this was May 4th, uh, landed in Oklahoma City, just got in the car, drove off. Uh, that dropped a real quick tornado, but we had to get a, out of the way of the hail. Uh, my background's in geography. Um, I do project management for a living, so on my days off, in a sense, I do research. And, um, this year, George Coronas also joined us, and, and Jake Vigna. And uh, I'm also part of the Explorers Club, and so I can check out these Explorer Club flag and write up these big reports of, about what I find out in the field. And so we were on this initial swarm, and about an hour later, it eventually did touch down. But, you know, we get up close and personal. Then early in March, this is before going out chasing, there was a long uh, EF4 tornado, multi-state. So I put together a 3D analysis of this storm. Um, I used GR analyst, I pull the radar data, I truncate the seconds. So I, um, one of the things I did do is I created all my files on a bunch of deep, uh, USB sticks. So you guys are welcome to take them. So on this particular storm, the upper winds were running about 120 miles an hour, you know, down to 75 to 10,000 feet. The storm's moving at 60 miles an hour, it was a mile wide. That means it's like 50 boxcars going by a location over a minute as this thing's moving down range for over an hour. So um, it's also in a tree line state, you know, so it's hard to see, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> part of my perspective is I've been looking at storms at least from my research, I'm looking at everything from your radar up. I, I see the 50 dBZ winds, or the you know, moisture, and basically the wind's lazy like a river in a stream, and it's blowing past it, and you get eddy currents and circulation. So I'm kind of a above ground kind of perspective for what I see for tornadoes and uh, tornado genesis. Um, what I also did is, you know, plotted the different wind speeds going up, you know, like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 feet of this 60 mile an hour storm that's just uh, trudging along. And then I plotted right before initiation. The warning went out at 158. Um, where it says yellow there, that's over 100 knots winds, you know, at the 10 to 20,000 foot range. So big, strong currents that are flowing past the obstruction. This is the rotation that would have been picked up by your rotation models. And because of this thing moving as fast as it was, I could only get two images per you know, sample. So it's just clipping along. So I'm just gonna move down range as this moves down. By 207, it's got a well-formed um, debris signature correlation coefficients already shown the debris circle. They've already initiated an emergency on this. This thing killed 23 people but how many lives were probably saved because they took the proactive step of saying, we've got an emergency of taking place. So that's kudos for that. And again, this is moving down range, <coughs> through 14. This went through two states, multiple uh, radar offices, EF4 damage in the early stages, and then this is just individual images, 233, 235. So I've changed states, I'm already in Georgia. So the colors will change a little bit because of the angle. This is a tornado nearby McCook. Uh, Jay took this picture close to it. Actually broke right next to it. Um, this is what the uh, 3D blend, base reflectivity and rotation looks like with the uh, main circulation. <coughs> Your survey, <coughs> close up of the tornado again um, in different blends. And George took this from another angle. Dripping Springs, this is down in Oklahoma. An EF1 uh, ended up being the damage. No real structures for this one. And the biggest thing here, again, 50 dBZ core. You got winds blowing both sides of it. You get the circulations both, both sides of the uh, obstruction. You know, kind of like a container ship with a river flowing past it. Again. So this doesn't discount all the work that everybody's doing ground up. I'm kind of 5,000 foot and above with my work and stuff. Here's a photo of the tornado. Here's just different views of the rotation bottom left. So base reflectivity on the bottom, rotation. So I got the cyclonic out on the outside of the storm, the anticyclonic. Usually the anticyclonics on the outside 
So once in a while, I find you guys have a damage report. Most of, most of the time, it's too weak. As this moves down range, clear hook. And I pretty much terminated in that tornado. Jefferson City, Missouri got hit by an EF3. This is the tail end of the tornado, the main circulation outside the hook, anticyclonic. And if you get cycling storms, especially when I'm looking at the three view, you'll get a cyclonic, anticyclonic, the next um, anticyclonic, then the next cyclonic. So you can see when storms are going to generate the next tornado when playing with the 3D work. Some of the damage photos, cars aren't necessarily safe. So again, using that obstruction viewpoint, I've added the rotation of spin. Usually the anticyclonics are weaker, downward air, less reflectivity from the radar. Um, I've got in the reflectivity, the velocity, where the main tornado core is. You know, it's, it's stronger on the outside where the winds are moving in the opposite directions. Usually there's not a lot to pick up where the actual spin is. And then El Reno, just the Monday before we had that super outbreak, potential day, tons of moisture was out there in the field, actually landing in Oklahoma City, towers are shooting up everywhere. I chased the one tornado that dropped uh, um, north of Oklahoma, and then there's a bunch to the north, or the far west, south. Um, this one was the Saturday later. I was across the street at the gas station from the motel just the week before, or the Monday before, Big squall lines coming through, couldn't get out of the car because of the rain. Uh, got to the hotel, another one came through. That Saturday, same deal. Um, this one actually uh, spun up. You had a real strong squall line. There was early uh, updraft circulation taking place. Basically, uh, a push on the, on the line. And the velocity, if you look at the 10,000 foot, it suddenly jetted forward. At twice the velocity, so it shot past where the actual rotation was located. That you know dropped down for four minutes, took out the trailer park in the hotel. So you see those little kinks in the line, you know. That might be what you're looking at. This is just the four radar views. So you get a roller going. Kind of, I live at the California, so you get the beach. You get those waves. At the two side of the waves, you get the, the break. You know, kind of similar with some of these squall lines. Correlation coefficient showed up early. Um, kind of like that March 3rd tornado. It's a good time to talk to your emergency managers. Hey, we're seeing damage. You better send some folks out. And the thing's still rain wrapped. You know, so when you're talking to your emergency managers, let them know. I think we've got something to respond to. Now, Lawrence Lin Linwood, um, this one went over an hour. This one had those tour vans that blown off the road. I'll just go through different blends. At 6.06 is roughly about the time it started, where the cyclonic, anti-cyclonic. Um, at least when I've done a lot of the field work, I'm not finding the rear flank downdraft hitting the ground too often, because usually I can find Dropping that down, trees blown down in that location. I don't usually see them too many reports. Sometimes you get your anti-cyclonic tornadoes like you did with Greensburg, a few other places, but they're not as common either. So usually it's just downward spinning air. Um, doesn't pick up as much on radar. Um, but if you do see a real flank down drought, straight line winds blow down power lines, trees. So it's kind of like, uh, like California. We get those gap winds, Santa Ana's. It gets compressed air down, descending down. Potentially the same kind of viewpoint. The brewer descending air, not picked up well in radar. I don't know if the bands got blown off by a rear flank downdraft or the anti-cyclonic circulation, but either way, they had a, a jet that shot through and took them off the road. Base velocity. 
I just did different blends. All these are on these uh, USB sticks. Storm relative. Here's from one of your surveys. Initiation of the tornado. And then Reed Kimmer actually launched that little parachute probe that actually got picked up, spun around this, and shot off 30,000 feet where the EF-4 damage was located. But basically, same pattern. So again, you've got the same structure of the tornado all from start to finish. And I'll just walk through the sequence. So I'm not sure how valuable ground pressure readings are going to be because it's not worth having somebody lose their life just to get a world record setting one time reading. And obviously the pressure is low. But is the pressure low at 10,000 feet or at the surface as it bubbles down and then towards the end you get the collapse. Of course, can't finish the slideshow without a good Texas sunset. <laughs> So, so a lot of my research deals with what role is the obstruction of wind flows against all these different types of tornadoes, whether it be uh, um, a squall line, whether it be a you know um, gustnado, not gustnado, but you know the stuff we see in Colorado. You know, just looking at the different things. California, we get the orographic effect. The storms come off the ocean. The storms only go up 20,000 feet. They go up a little bit. We get a quick spin around them. Or they come across the Central Valley, um, and basically we've got winds moving to the north. They come across, we'll get a lateral spin. <clears throat> the tornado emergency, how many lives were saved by the fact that they declared that on March 3rd? You know, they lost 23, but they might have saved quite a few. It's hard to quantify, but it's messaging. Squall lines, I kind of look at a, a wave structure if you get a kink in the wave. So it's kind of hard to put out a tornado warning, but maybe up, increase your tornado, thunderstorm warnings with the possibility of a tornado, because you know, they spin up so quick. Debris signature, same thing. You see that correlation co coefficient. Talk to your emergency managers. We're seeing stuff on the radar. You might want to check the welfare of the residents, make sure everybody's OK, especially rain wrapped. That triplet combination that I see on the Cyclonic and the two anticyclonics in the hook areas, you know, I see that on EF3s and above. It's real common, you know. So, in my perspective so far, I haven't seen RPD hit the ground too often because if there is, it's not been on the videos, it's not been on the damage reports very often. But, anyways, it's just two cents on that whole RFD deal. Um, and I kind of treat the the ground being hit as the scour zone, kind of like a creek bed. You know, flows are going past the boulder, and that's where there's erosion. Downrange, there's deposition. So I know it's a big part of research, and that's what we're in the business of warning for. But I kind of treat it as that's the scour zone of that entire flow blocking approach. And then we ran out of highway going to the Gulf, so we're now chasing potential hurricane season. So that was my career this year. Thank you. We have time for some questions. Anything? First of all, Tom, thanks for remembering us during the shutdown. You're they were our offices. We were it's kind of a depressing time to shut down, so appreciate you sending a little food our direction. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I would just uh, caution you with uh, you know saying certain things with the ADD or tornado specific because. 99% of the time, the ADD is not resolving tornadoes. It's resolving mesocyclone scale. So just caution you with saying that's the tornado or this is. And then some of the anticyclonic stuff. You may have some anticyclonic shear, um, you know, on say the west side of, of a more organized cyclonic shear, but it's not necessarily an organized vortex on the say the west side. So just if you right, because at least from my perspective, everything on the, the left side, so to speak, it's kind of descending downwards so it's broadening. So I don't, and that's usually, there's not funnels on the, the right. northern side. It's usually not even an organized vortex. It's just there's anticyclonic shear on this. Anyway. That's, you're right. Nothing that would create the, the damage report. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.